Welcome back. Welcome Episode back. 23. Woohoo! 23. <laughs> I get excited every time the number goes up. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are super excited for this episode. This was a yeah. lot of fun. Fun to edit, do. right? Super fun for me to edit because I didn't get to actually be there on the actual trip that you're about to see. That's right. So, Title of this episode, Learning. It should be effortless. Should be effortless. Um, what you're going to see right off the bat is mm-hmm. a student talking about how tired she is. And we're only two weeks into the semester, the second right. semester at this point. That's what you're going to see right off the bat. Right. And so just as a quick intro, uh, a book that changed my life uh, many, many years ago, probably about 20 years ago, is called The Book of Learning and Forgetting by Frank Smith. And Frank Smith, um, you should read it, but one of the, and we'll talk a little bit more about it on the back end, but one of the things that I got from this book is that learning should not be toil. There's a difference between rigor Mm -hmm. and toil. And what does real learning look like? Uh, and how, how should real learning come about? And mm-hmm. I would pose to you that learning should be effortless, mm-hmm. can still be rigorous, and yet be effortless. Mm-hmm. So um, this episode is a gift to you to see that in action. Right. And so as you're watching this, it's, it is a little bit of a longer episode, but I promise you it's worth it. Um, well, just if you love dolphins and if you love whales, <laughs> you'll love the love ocean this. and boats. And <laughs> you'll love this episode, but specifically for our, all our colleagues out mm-hmm. there, what we want you to try to do as you're watching this is intentionally and even maybe write mm-hmm. it down, look for the ways in which the students are learning effortlessly. And okay, yes, this is this was specifically a trip for um, your advanced bio To go well watching. Yeah. Right. But look for ways in which they're learning effortlessly and not just about science Mm -hmm. because that's ultimately, I think where we would love to be is we would love to be um, at a place where we're not learning within four walls of a classroom Mm -hmm. every day where learning is effortless and it's expeditionary and Mm -hmm. um, you're learning not just about one concept or one discipline at a time, but it's just this overarching uh, total embodiment of learning that is fun and and vicarious and inquiry driven. Mm -hmm. And life is not divided in a bunch of discrete little things. Okay. Even if you're working in a job in a certain area, it's still not just about that one topic. Right. So when we get back, we'll actually break them down for you. I wrote down a list. And so we'll see, maybe uh, see how many that you get and we'll, maybe we'll Uh, compare notes. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Here we are on our way to whale watching. Hi, Jim. Hello. Ahoy. (laughs) We're going to see dolphins, right, Jim? So get this one right here. And the ships and giggles. <laughs> Lillian, are you excited? Mm, I'm so excited. They what they love to do if they're playful is when you're up at speed, they'll ride your the pressure weight that the boat creates as yeah. it moves forward. Oh, here they go. Skosh, skosh, past 12. Oh, there it goes. Right between those two Right boats. between okay. the two, and I think, there, yeah. I think there's two whales. Oh, there's a little spout, you're right. I think there's a mommy and a baby. Or as we like to call it, a mom and a 2020 or a 2019 model. <laughs> are there laws about how close you can get to them? Yes. You are only supposed oh, to get 100 yards at minimum distance. Oh, you don't need to get what if they come up to you? That's, That's okay. Allowed. And to be safe, you're supposed to cut your engines. And it's fun to cut your engines anyways because right. you can hear them. I don't like it when boats, big boats especially, get on both sides of it of the whale because then you're trapping it and, and the whale itself will feel that and they'll break off instead of doing their their direct line of path to where they're headed they'll change course 
Can you guys see the footprint in the water halfway between the two boats? Yeah. That that is the whale footprint. Really? What does yep. that mean? I guess. So when they disturb the water, they leave kind of this really cool slick. And um and is you can like lighter? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, so you can use that to get direction of travel. Is it coming towards us? It sure is. Oh, oh. oh wow. What kind of whale is that? That is a gray. Oh, this guy is gonna block our shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. There it is. Isn't that pretty? Oh, wow. It's called the Californian. It's a boat that is, it's from the Maritime Museum. Good job. So that heading is about 162 degrees straight to those islands. And that's always where the whales take off for once they hit. Yep, yep, those islands are in Mexico. So when they reach right here at Point Loma, they always make a heading for those islands. And that's how we always know we can find them. It's interesting, year after year, same pattern. Okay, so it is our second day on the boat for whale watching. We're up on the boat. Hi, Ash. It's a little windy, but over the water. <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear me, but this morning Mrs. Chandler did a devotion um, talking about how uh, in Genesis 1 verse 20 uh, it speaks about how the waters are teeming with creatures. And I just have that word stuck in my head, teeming. And I'm looking at this ocean, this like endless ocean, and I'm just thinking of all the creatures that I'm not even aware of that God created that are under my feet. Like, it's just so fascinating to think about how he created a whole nother world in the ocean, as opposed to the creatures that we know and love so well on land. Oh, and there's also a bird. And in the sky, I mean, those are the three categories that he really talks about are wild creatures of the land and birds of the sky and fish of the ocean. In this class, actually, Advanced Bio, uh, right now Chan is asking us or challenging us to think about the question, how do we as students restore our relationship with the ocean? because there's definitely a lack of respect for the ocean and for the creatures that live in them. So our main question is, how do we restore that? So I think part of it is just knowledge and admiration. So we just saw some dolphins. I don't know how far the GoPro can see. Oh, they're so cute. Is it normal for seals to be a dolphin? Yes. Dolphins yeah, with dolphins. with seals, <laughs> seals with with whales, seals with. Yeah, if they're, they're, they're with food. everything, if there's, if there's food, food there's they're food. there. Yeah. Oh, that would make sense. So That's Amelia, so uh huh. The word privateer is in there. I feel like are you are the. Wow co-host of our vlog <laughs> because you have appeared in, so in many many, many episodes including the dna extraction video <laughs> oh, realize. oh yes yes with freshmen I, that... <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be in that video oh, that's so you are the unofficial host oh i feel so special no. you should be <laughs>
Hey, that's because I love hanging out with Chan and Thomas. That's one of the best ways I can spend my time. Hanging out with Chan and Mama T. Yeah, fun adventures. Indeed. So we're doing citizen science here. So citizen science is kind of this new thing where um, the regular old citizen, when they go out and they do stuff, they actually record it and send it into scientists for actual data, because it is actual data. So why don't you explain, guys, what we have on our sheet? So we got the time, and we got the location, like the latitude and the longitude, and also uh, we got depth and uh, species and uh, numbers. And we can get all that information from the boat, mm -hmm. and we're just packing data. Exactly. So what we have done for the last 12 years is we take note of our har the harbor where we leave from and uh, including the weather conditions as well. So uh, today our last sighting was that we, you, we, uh, we got a recording of it. What was it that we identified? Yeah, what kind of dolphins was it? What, we wrote PW, PWS, but what does that stand for? Uh, Pacific glass sided. Pacific yeah. white sided dolphin. And of course, we used a field guide to get that, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and we're gonna send this data in to scientists and then they can use it for however they want. Yay, team. All right. Chan, so is this one big dolphin pod? Yep. So how big do dolphin pods get? Because it's like a super pod of many. Here we go. It is a super pod. Yahoo! They want to play. They want to play. <laughs> here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Woo! Look at them. The blue water as it moves with them. It's so pretty. At least a thousand, if not more. A couple thousand, I'd gather. Easily. Oh, yeah. Did you catch the one that jumped? Ha <laughs> ha. You could just hear them. Mexico, right about there, certainly there. Maybe about nine or ten miles from the Mexican border, right here. We're that close. Yep. So we are just going to do our polar plunge. Are you guys all going to go to the bow and all jump in at the same time? I, I, I won't do it off the Did you say it's 55 it. degrees? Oh my goodness, I'm so cold. I can't hold the stream. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is a before. It's a little jelly. Already <laughs> cold. Yeah. It, it's a little, ooh. <laughs> oh, the camera's going to be shaking. Oh, that's 
Okay, 64 is okay, I can do 64. <laughs> I was like, are you trying to make me feel cold? <laughs> One unmanned thing. I want to be able to prove to my mother I did it. <laughs> Go off the back. Off this, right? Um, or this. She, uh, she said just the bow because it's t moving too much to go off the actual. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's so bad. Hustle, hustle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the goosebumps. I'm, gotta wait for Mark. Mark, you slow poke. You're freezing us. Have you ever done like a true polar plunge like this before? Um. I no. When yeah, it was I like December. Pool. Yeah. Yeah. I no. Not in the ocean like this. This is a new experience. January rain, and that was freezing. Ooh. Yo, is this like part of salt? Yeah. It's like attitude, leadership, face your fears. This reminds me of salt. And okay, someone else has to do a countdown because we're gonna like chicken out if you do it I'm or if we do it. About how I'm gonna get okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. Actually, wait. Is this like for real? For real? One. an opportunity yeah. to do that, do that. Yeah. Chad, have you ever done that? Of course. I have. <laughs> I'm, however, I am safety diver. Hey, I'd like to get yeah, that's her excuse for this together. time. One more. Oh, that was so fun. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. From here or from up there? From up there. Yeah, you, you the don't want to land sideways. Yeah. You'll, you'll box it from here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Your boxer what? Oh, wait, how did I jump? Oh, rough. Wait, how do I jump We're learning about eardrums in psychology right now. About how they work. <laughs> oh, <you're real. laughs> Ready, set, go! <laughs> yes! Woo! Atta girl! Woohoo! Hey, atta girl. Best part of the day? Dolphins. Dolphins, 100%. The dolphins, 100%. When you have a devotion about the swarming swarms and then you get to experience the swarming swarms, yeah. you get any done. Fun day today. So got a little bit of citizen science on top of just good time and good relationships and this is what we do. Woohoo! After a long day of boating, we've got some more fun. Try and make your way Get it, Lillian! <laughs> Update, Lillian just almost wiped out, but she caught herself. I see like my paddle. It's, I'm blaming my tools. <laughs> you get it, girl. Oh! <laughs> there we go. How's that, Ash? It's fine. I like it. Kayak versus paddleboard. Do you like kayak better? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
You might not. So Lillian was paddling and her paddle broke in half. <laughs> so I knew it would. Here we are. Wait, no, let me go. Yeah. That's hard to paddle and do camera. You got it, hon? Maybe. <laughs> If I tip over, I swear I will. That's the last thing you need to happen is for you to fall in completely. Oh my goodness. Oh my god! Mark, I freaking swore! Lillian's stuck back there, so we're gonna wait for her because remember, Sarah, we don't leave our wingmans behind. No, we don't. We don't. It's okay. It's okay, Lils, we'll wait for you. back to Tucson from the rest of our trip and so we like to go around and say takeaways from the trip so we're gonna start with Sarah. Uh, what I took away from this trip was that it was just a well-needed trip to just kind of get away and um, go out like into God's creation um, and it was just super surreal being able to see um, animals that we like hear about in class, um, seeing like a super pod of dolphins and all the whales. So yeah, yeah. that's what I took away. Julio. Mark, you wanna go next? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, okay. All right, you can go next. <laughs> okay, so probably my takeaway is um, that uh, you never know what's gonna happen next. Like, we never saw, we never like noticed, I mean, we never knew that we we're gonna see thousands of dolphins jumping in the sea. Like, it's just, it was amazing. And also like, I just love like having like this, um, small groups and then you know, we have really great conversations on the boat. So it just, um, it helps us like found our relationship better. So. Yeah, that's my takeaways. Woohoo! Lillian? Is this the camera? Yeah, that's the camera and it's running. It's running. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Um. <laughs> um, I would say that my takeaway is that creation is pretty cool. And I love seeing all the dolphins and just getting to experience the calm of the ocean and the, like the power of it at the same time and I really enjoy just getting to spend time with everyone and um, just learn what it means to be still. So I'm not very good at that and so I just really enjoyed a very peaceful weekend. Yeah being still especially in the midst of senior year second semester <laughs> yeah. that is definitely a How many thing. times yesterday, or like mm -hmm. in the last two days, we were on that boat and nobody was talking. And I was like, I didn't want to break the silence. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I was enjoying it so much, I just didn't want to say a peep. It was, it was really cool. Very refreshing. Okay, Ash? Okay, so my takeaway <laughs> was, or takeaways, is being out on the boat was very much so needed, especially in the middle of our senior year. Um, but like Chandler said, like those silent moments, those were very nice to have. And then we'd like see dolphins in between those silent moments and seeing the super, super pod of dolphins was absolutely amazing. And then we went back through it twice. <laughs> so, that was a lot of fun, and it was fun making, building our relationships together with people that I wasn't like super best friends with, but I was friends with, but like making those relationships stronger and like getting to know Amelia's mom better and knowing how sweet and adorable she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that would be my takeaways. Mom, did you go? I will, I'll go after you. Okay. So, this is my first time chaperoning for a high school trip, and first time ever chaperoning for Amelia's class, and it's just really blessed me so much being able to just re build relationships with these kids. They are top-notch, and 
just watching them, how they relate to each other, how they encourage each other and help each other. And they've got each other's back. And that to me is, it's a really special thing. And to be able to experience it with them was amazing. Um, I agree with what was said earlier that this trip was very well needed. Um, even though it's just a couple days, um, when you have a small group like this, there are five of us students um, and two chaperones. It's it's just this social bonding time that you need, and it's also really a rest from academics because although academics are great, it's also great to take a break and rest. Um, yeah, this was an academic trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different right? kind of learning, it, right? There you go. It's, oh, it's learning awesome. is effortless, vicarious. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we could do all our learning like on this trip, mm -hmm. that would be pretty great. <laughs> but it's cool how we implement that as much as we here. can at Desert. Bye. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's on video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how fun was that, right? Oh my gosh, a super fun! <laughs> it was so cool. How geeky was I? <laughs> I know a lot of you won't be able to go do out, go do something exactly like that. Mm -hmm. But as we talk, think about ways in which you can do mm -hmm. things different. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be as easy as stepping into a backyard. Our, our, our original campus had um, three acres behind it. Mm -hmm. And we just turned it into a study site. We just turned it into a place where we walked out and we observed. And you, you, you'd you be amazed at the miraculous learning that can take place just because you get outside of your walls. Mm -hmm. Right. So here's some things that we found as we were, I mean, we already knew this, but we wanted to, we kind of wrote them down. So maybe these are some of the things that you, you found as well. So how are they learning about just outside of science, how are they just learning effortlessly? Mm -hmm. um, how about how to work relationally with other mm -hmm. people, how to work well with other people, how to ask questions of those who are in the know, you know, people mm -hmm. who are experts in their field and, you know, not, not necessarily their peers, but adults, ooh, big, scary mm -hmm. people that they don't know how to do that. Well, you know, that, I mean, that you can even tie that into the interview process as they grow mm -hmm. and they have to go out there into the real world. Right. But this right. is a way for them to start practicing that now. Um, how to use reference books, right? Because yeah. you were talking to them, talking to them about being um, doing citizen science. Yeah, citizen science. And I said in the video, it's a new thing, though it's probably not actually super new. But there is a movement right now um, of scientists who are are out in the field. Um, they so, for example, there's this gal that I follow, and she's working in Ar in Antarctica on cruise ships, and she takes people out in little dinghies, and she teaches the people who are there on a cruise on how to collect plankton and look at them and identify them and count them and all that sort of good stuff. So she's using people who are on a vacation, but they're on an expedition. They're mm -hmm. literally going to the end of the world. And she's teaching them how to collect data. So I do that in a really small manner um, of what we do around here. iNaturalist, this great app where kids can learn, people can learn how to collect data. What's it called? iNaturalist. iNaturalist. It's this great app where you collect data wherever you're going. Um, now, that, that all sounds very sciencey and so on. But we live in a world in which there is information everywhere. And now that we're globalized, we're so connected, we can yes. share that information and then scientists can do real research with that. They can, mm -hmm. they can um, process that data so that we have ongoing information um, sources for, for whatever they need. It's well, cool. your citizen science sounds, science sounds a lot like what we historians know to be social science, which mm -hmm. came up in like the 60s and the 70s. Wow. Okay. And it's um, employing, just like you said, mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge of your average everyday right? ordinary person rather than your super elite or wealthy mm -hmm. to be able to tell their version of history. Right. And so that's something that we're actually doing in my history class right now. That's our mm -hmm. second semester project um, that the, that they're working on, which which will be an upcoming episode. So, <laughs> but I mean, uh, talk about contextualizing what we do every day, where we are. Well, 
wherever you go, there you are. And there's information to be obtained. And mm -hmm. teaching the kids to be lifelong learners. Yes, to... which is another part of what's really important here is right. continual learning. Absolutely. Are you teaching such that it employs and fosters continual learning? And it's vicarious. It is right there in the moment being present enough. Oh, by the way, did that not come up as a lesson? To slow down, to be quiet, yes. to be present. So if we're in a classroom all the time and we're going, nah, 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 and we're talking to them, mm -hmm. we're not teaching them to be observant, to be quiet, to think, mm -hmm. to dwell, to reflect, mm -hmm. to see. What mm -hmm. does it look like? To, what does it mean to see something? Right. So the, these sorts of opportunities are actually little training sessions mm -hmm. to get kids to think differently and see differently. Yeah. So other things maybe that you found, they're learning about geography. Mm -hmm. You notice how Chan was pointing out like mm -hmm. just this far off the coast is Mexico mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. from Point Lomas, this is the navigator mm -hmm. navigatory. Sure. Don't think that's a word. <laughs> These are the migrating patterns of the whales. How we'll go with that right, one. Right. Um, so geography, right? They're they're learning about the temperature of the ocean. You, they ask the captain of the ship, "What's the temperature of the ocean before I <laughs> jump in?" Right? That's something that you wouldn't think about ordinarily. About mm -hmm. what's the temperature of the water? Well, you mm -hmm. probably want to know that before you jump in, so mm -hmm. you can mentally prepare. Um, how about stepping off of the boat? and outside mm. of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. learning to face your fears. Fantastic. These are life skills mm -hmm. that our students need to learn, that if we're just sitting in four walls and we're doing a lab, or if I'm just lecturing on, mm -hmm. I don't know, pick any history topic, are they learning these kinds of things? Yeah. Did you did you notice how well they love each other? Mm -hmm. our, our, our community is one in which we foster relationships, and we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. But I really love this particular episode and how it's so evident that these kids furiously love each other mm -hmm. um, in a in a in a real relational sense, mm -hmm. and not a weird sense or anything like that. And then you see the adults relating to them in a really mm -hmm. loving sort of way as well. Right. Um, let's see. So learning is relational. Yes, it it's is. It's not individualistic. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm quoting from his book, by the way. I might be, right. bring up a couple more. Keep yeah. going. Um, how about safety procedures? Oh, right. Yeah. We, uh, we very much talk through about what it's like to be on a boat. The, not just the buddy system and knowing where your buddy are and having a hand on the rail, but mm -hmm. where are the, what do you need to know before we get underway? Uh, right. We'd like to know where the life jackets are. I mean, things like that. Yeah. There were, we had a safety briefing, mm -hmm. um, definitely, before we got underway. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that you're not going to necessarily learn always inside <laughs> the four walls of a classroom, at least not in history, maybe in your labs. Yeah. But Well, y we do in labs. But again, there in context, it has meaning. Sometimes yes. we give information in, in a like, classroom setting, eh. and it doesn't really... If it doesn't really impact their life or their well-being... They're not going to mm -hmm. care as much. Mm -hmm. It doesn't relate. That's right. Um, let's see. Encouraging others. You saw how they were encouraging encouraging each other and jumping <clears throat> off that boat or, or um, I don't know, just um, having consideration for one another. Mm -hmm. Respect. Having conversations. Trust. How about getting away from your cell phone and actually mm -hmm. engaging in a dialogue with mm -hmm. other people? So, yeah. I don't know. I just... Um... Interdisciplinary. Oh yeah, interdisciplinary. You saw there was a connection between the the um, the eardrums, right? Mm. And oh yeah, they kept talking about other things that from other classes yes. or other life experiences. Yes. So there's some interdisciplinary things there. You mm. saw them mimicking them mimicking <laughs> the whales in the water. I'm a whale. How cute is that, right? I mean, something that seems so elementary, and yet it really helps to concrete mm -hmm. what you've learned. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, gosh, I have more. I have more. <laughs> Resiliency, problem solving. Mm -hmm. They've learned those sorts of things. Um, how about that they don't need adults to tell them? <laughs> okay, so how I to told learn. her this. So when they went out kayaking and paddle boarding, I purposely gave the one girl oh, a, Lily, a broken, pat, a I broken paddle. Oh, Lily. I hope you knew this already. I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> And, uh, and there were no adults, I mean, like in, in the immediate vicinity, I, I gave them their boundaries and I said, go. And of course I was kind of keeping a second eye on them. And as we were well, walking they had around life jackets on, yeah. but the idea was like, go, go, go have some, some risk. I mean, it was calculated risk and so on, yeah. but I purposely sent them away to see what would happen when I knew that the paddle was going to break. And it was amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. never leave your wingman and we're right. going to help her out. And I mean, all those things. And she's like, 
well, my paddle broke. Um, oh, well, I mean, and so there wasn't like, uh, again, resiliency. It wasn't like, well, my paddle. Da. Now, just so you guys know, I did eventually walk around and give her a paddle that worked and so that they could finish, you know, with having, having full, you know, the full tools that they needed. But it was important for them to just go on their own and not have a bunch of adults tell them what to do and where to go. And that yeah. Kind of thing. But you know, for a student to have that kind of a reaction to a broken paddle, you really mm -hmm. have to foster <laughs> what an appropriate reaction yeah. would be when you, if you get discouraged, how do you react mm -hmm. to that positively? And how do you yeah. teach all of your other, um, I think that means we have to go. Um, <laughs> Uh, how do you teach other students to come behind and support that, the yeah. other student that might be discouraged? So right. that's, of course, something that you have to be able to foster in your classroom. And that starts mm -hmm. in day one and you're, mm -hmm. you know, as the school, school year begins. But it's never too late to start. And how are kids going to develop those life skills if you don't present them those opportunities Absolutely. to do that? Absolutely. If we it's keep them okay so to fail. Safe, yeah, it's okay to fail. If we keep them so safe, then we are actually removing those opportunities from yeah. them. Because yeah. guess what? Life is full of failures, yeah. as we all know, right? As we all know. So, well, I, we talked a lot. It's a, you know, there's a lot of things to see, yeah. but go back through, watch it again and um, be inspired and in how you can take something that you're doing and, and figure out a way to get it outside of four walls. Yes. Learning should be effortless, effortless continual, vicarious, uh, relational. Yes. So not toil. Yeah. Try to build your lesson plans around something like that. Oh, if you can do that. That would be amazing. And it doesn't happen every day. All right. No. Um, and don't, don't, no. please don't hear that message from us. But you know, if we, if we just try a little bit here and there and we increase on it, yeah. um, I think it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. A winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> anyway, just try one or two things in an upcoming lesson plan. Let us know how it goes. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>